Hi guys! The objective of this video is to classify a whole load of different mineral samples. In this video we will be using all the properties we covered in the previous video. The properties such as colour, streak, luster, hardness, cleavage and fracture, density and whether the mineral will, will react with acid. If you haven't watched the video just prior to this one, I would maybe suggest you go and watch that now. In this video, we're going to use this table quite a lot. This table summarises all the properties of the main different types of minerals. So this is the first mineral sample we're going to have a look at. For all the mineral samples, I've included two photos of each sample, just to show you that the same mineral can always look quite different. This mineral has an earthy luster, and the luster is definitely non-metallic. The mineral is a whitey colour, and when we scrape the mineral along a ceramic plate, we see that it produces a white streak. We can scratch the mineral with our fingernail quite easily, and it has a hardness of 1 on Mohs scale of hardness. The rock doesn't show any clear fracture pattern. And something else we notice is that it has a quite a waxy feel when we pick it up. This mineral is talc. So if we look at our table, we said that the mineral was non-metallic. It was white in colour and produced a white streak. It had a hardness of 1 with no particular fracture pattern. Furthermore, another property that we associate with talc is having a waxy feel. So we conclude that this mineral is talc. Here is another mineral sample. We see that it has quite a glassy luster. The mineral also has a green colour. In this sample here, not this whole rock is the mineral, but just these crystals in the, within the rock. We do a streak test by scraping the mineral along a ceramic plate and it has a white streak. We do a hardness test and we see that we can scratch the mineral with a steel knife. The mineral has a hardness of around 5 or 6. And although the crystals are quite small, we can see that it probably does not have any particular fracture pattern. This sample is an olivine sample. If we look at our table here, we can say that the olivine had shades of green, produced a white streak and had a hardness of about 5 or 6 because it could only just be scratched by a steel knife. It had no clear fracture pattern and therefore we say that the sample is olivine. The main property we look for when we're looking for olivine is the green colour because olivine is always quite distinctly green. Our next sample is this one here. This sample clearly has a metallic luster and has the colour of a brassy yellow. We do a streak test on the mineral and we see that it has a greeny black streak. We do a hardness test and we see that it has a hardness of around 6.5 on Mohs scale of hardness. And finally, we can see that the crystals form in very cubic shapes, which is a giveaway that we are looking at a pyrite mineral. So if we go back to our table, we can see that pyrite has a metallic luster, is brassy in colour with a greenish black streak, a hardness of six and a half, and develops cubic crystals. So we have pyrite. When we're looking for a pyrite, the main thing that we look for are the cubic crystals and the brassy colour. These are the very distinctive properties of pyrite minerals. Here's our next sample. It has a glassy luster and it comes in a white or it can be clear and colourless. We've been told these two minerals are the same, but one produces a clear streak and one produces a white streak. This is kind of strange, so we do some more tests. We scratch it with a coin and find that it has a hardness of 3, because we can easily scratch it with the coin. One pretty clear observation we can make is the fact that it has three-dimensional cleavage. That's why it has these cube shapes here. So we suspect that maybe it's calcite because of this three-dimensional cleavage. So we do an acid test. When we put the acid on the mineral, it begins to fizz. The acid test, along with the three-directional cleavage, shows us that this rock is calcite. 
As I said, the main things that tell us that a rock is calcite is the fact that it has a hardness of 3 and then the acid test confirms that we in fact have calcite. Here is another sample. We see this sample maybe has a submetallic luster, but it also kind of looks glassy. Within the sample there's no real clear colouring. It is a little bit brown and then it turns white and we've got areas of grey and cream. So I won't rely on the colour for this particular sample. We do a streak test and the mineral has a clear streak. And I can kind of scratch the mineral with my finger now. So we'll probably say it has a hardness of around 2 or 2.5. Two one pretty important observation we can make next is that it has a platy cleavage. We can see here that the mineral will break off into plates along these lines. So we've observed that it has a platy cleavage and this makes us think maybe it's a mica. But what sort of mica? Muscovite or biotite? We look and see that it is a light coloured mineral and we finally say that the mineral is a muscovite mica. So when we were looking at our muscovite mica, we saw that there were lots of different colours it could take, so we sort of ignored that property there. We saw that we had a colourless streak and it wasn't too hard, about two and a half on most scale of hardness. The cleavage was the big giveaway. We saw that the cleavage was platy. And this, along with the fact that it was lighter in colour and not a dark grey or black, we decided that it was muscovite mica. This mineral here is quite similar to the muscovite mica. It has a platy cleavage, a clear streak and of a hardness of around 2. However, we observe the mineral is dark in colour. The mineral is a biotite mica. So for the biotite mica, it was dark in colour, had a colourless streak, a hardness of around 2 and a platy cleavage. The two distinctive properties of the biotite mica are the platy cleavage and the darker colour compared to the muscovite. Here's another sample. We see that it is sometimes white, but it can take up other colours as well. We do a streak test and it has a colourless streak. It has a hardness of around 7, and it seems that it has no particular fracture pattern. This mineral is quartz. The main thing to look for in quartz is its hardness and its colourless streak. We often cannot rely on the colour of the rock itself. So that mineral was quartz. This mineral here is quite tricky to figure out. We know all these samples are of the same mineral. We can see that all the samples have a sort of red colouring on them and we think that this is because it's been weathered and this is evidence of rusting of an iron mineral within the rock. We do a streak test and the mineral has a reddish brown streak. It has a hardness of around 5 or 6 and it has a metallic luster on the surfaces where it hasn't been weathered. This mineral is hematite. As we can see here, our hematite has a metallic luster, a reddish brown streak and a hardness of 5 or 6. The main giveaway that this mineral was hematite was the reddish brown streak and the fact that it had a red rusty colour on its surface. Here's our third last sample for this video. This sample has a metallic luster. The rock is black and has a black streak. It has a hardness of around 6 and we suspect because of these properties that maybe it's magnetite. To have a look at whether it's magnetite or not, we see whether the rock is magnetic. We do this by bringing a compass near the rock and if the rock turns the compass off magnetic north, we know that the rock is interfering with the compass and is therefore magnetic. We do this test and we find the sample is in fact magnetic. The sample is magnetite. The main giveaway that this sample was magnetite was the fact that it was black and metallic and then we did the magnetic test on it which proved that it was in fact magnetite. This sample here has a glassy luster. It's greeny, bluey, purple in colour and this is an indicator that maybe we shouldn't use colour as a property to determine what sort of mineral it is. But we'll keep this in mind. It has a colourless streak, a hardness of 4 and no particular fracture pattern. Keeping in mind the fact that it's green and has a hardness of 4, we think that the mineral is a fluorite. The main thing that lets us know that a mineral is fluorite is its greeny colour, although fluorite isn't always necessarily green, so it's sometimes hard to use this as a reliable indicator.
The other thing we look at is the colourless streak and the hardness of 4. These three properties all tell us that the mineral is in fact fluorite. This is our last mineral sample. It doesn't actually come up on our table here, but it's rather important so I'm going to go over it anyway. This mineral has an earthy or glassy luster. It can have a pinky colour or a cream grey colour. It also has a white streak. It has two cleavage planes which we can see here, one and two and one and two. And it has a hardness of around six to six and a half. These samples are both feldspar minerals, however they're both slightly different. The one with the pinky coloration is orthoclase feldspar. Orthoclase feldspar often always has this pink coloration, whereas the other feldspar is a plagioclase feldspar, and plagioclase feldspar is normally creamy or grey. As I said, these two minerals don't actually show up on our table that we've been referring to throughout the video, but they're still very important minerals that are present in a lot of igneous rocks. So that was our last sample for today. I'm just going to finish back on this table here because it contains most of the minerals that we find in a lot of our rocks that we will be studying. All the properties here are quite important, especially the distinctive properties I've written down. If you ever get tested on classifying minerals, knowing these distinctive properties can really help. The only other two minerals I would suggest you try to know, other than these ones I've gone through today, are plagioclase and orthoclase feldspar because they come up in a lot of our igneous rocks. I hope this video helped and thanks for watching.